Okay, so what's been DNA fingerprinting? So it's similar to our fingerprint. So you see, as uh, we talk about DNA fingerprinting, it's similar to our fingerprint. Means that unique. Our DNA is very, very unique. So in this whole world, you won't be able to get someone actually having the same fingerprints or DNA fingerprint as you, unless two possible conditions. First, you have identical twins that you do not know. Identical twins, huh? Second, or your parent clone you. You don't know. Okay, so one day, eh, how come both of you have the same DNA fingerprinting? Maybe, okay, you guys are a pair of identical twins. Okay, non-identical twins, then even like this, your DNA fingerprinting will still different. Okay, so also known as this uh, DNA profiling, it's a process to determine the individual DNA characteristics, which is unique, same as our fingerprint. So where we apply this, we apply the criminal investigation, for example, the dead body. Okay, the dead body. So we don't know what's identity, correct not. Or you want to know, I mean, for example, dead body and uh, identified already. So you call for the, I mean, so those uh, parents of those uh, family member. And then we want to check whether it's correct or not. Then we can use this. Or we want to determine the suspect. All right, so criminal investigations. Or parental testing. Parental testing basically means that one day someone realized that father blood group AB, mother blood group O, and him A are uh, O. So it means that something's wrong. It can either be A and B only. It can be it cannot be O. So you can go for the parental testing in this case. Okay. So we have two techniques. We have two techniques. One is O techniques in the syllabus. Okay, O techniques. This technique is known as the RF. LP is no I or in uh the full terms is called restrictions fragments length polymorphism and this process actually we use restrictions enzyme to do this and we do know that restriction enzyme recognize a particular okay restriction enzyme recognize a particular regions of the uh, the allele okay I mean the restriction side there so if let's say any mutation take place in the allele, then we will be able to use the restriction enzyme to cleave it or actually uh, produce a different fragment. And then we can separate this fragment by using the agarose gel electrophoresis like what we have learned before. So let us look at this, uh, a quick one. Okay, so now let's say, uh, let's say, we do know that a particular gene, they have alleles, correct not? Let's say, for example, very simple one. So we have the dominant allele A, recessive allele small a. Okay? So because of the mutations, so this is the allele A, this is allele A. So this is a dominant allele big A. So dominant allele big A may have three restrictions inside. One, two, maybe three restriction side. Can I see that? Okay, three restriction sites. But because of mutation take place somewhere here, and then now the restriction enzyme lost the recognition site already. So it means that it only can detect two. So if you use a probe to determine, to detect this region, a probe that can detect these regions, then Later, we were going to have a DNA profile already. Okay, now what's this mean? Look at this. Huh? We consider one gene. Huh? In this case, we consider one gene, only one gene with two allele, big A and small A allele. Now look at A. If A, we're going to create how many fragments? Two fragments, right now. If a person with a big A allele, right? So you're going to create what? You're going to create this first person, huh? okay, big A allele. So we're going to create two fragments. One long fragment, one short fragment. And the long fragments, we're going to use a probe to detect it later. Short fragments, we don't care. Correct. So a person with small a allele will only get one big fragment, which can be detected by the probe. Here. Are you clear? Okay. So what we're going to do here is very simple. If you look at three different person, uh, because... With these two, big A and small a allele, we're going to have three different genotypes. So a person homozygous dominant, a person homozygous recessive, a person
person with the heterozygous. So ex you expect what in this case? If you throw them into the gel electrophoresis after we cut it by using the uh, ration enzyme, it creates fragments, kind of. Are you clear? So if a person with big A, big A allele, because we only detect this, so it means that we're going to have one band only. Individual with small a, small a allele will be this, right? The full length. So length longer, so it means that moves slower. You only see one band. Cut We consider one gene, huh? we consider one gene. Okay? And then person with heterozygous, what will happen? The person with heterozygous, you're going to see two bands. Because heterozygous, big A, we detect a smaller here. Fragment. A person, I mean, uh, sorry, a recessive allele longer. So you can see that three different patterns already. With one gene, I have three different patterns already. So if you consider about 20 genes or more than that, you will create a very, very unique bending pattern which will represent each individual. Are you clear? Okay, it will represent different individual. For example, if let's say I include now. Okay, I include B and D. Okay. So B longer, for example. Okay. Then research enzyme, eh? another research enzyme, maybe detect here and here. Okay. And because of mutation take place, it creates a new research site here, can be recognized. Then you can see that the bending pattern is different. So if you combine all those data together, you will create a very unique pattern ready. So this unique pattern, it will represent a particular individual. Because if you look at this, how many? In this case, we're going to create 16 okay, uh, different kinds of genotypes. You can have big A, big A, big B, big B. You can have big A, small A, big B, big B. So you can have so much of possibility. Definitely, you create different bending Patterns. The more gene you include, you give us the bending pattern that allow us to do what? Parental testing. Later, we'll look at the result and also the criminal investigation. Are you clear? Okay. Yeah. Any questions so far, guys? This is the first, uh, the oldest, the traditional way to do this. More tedious because sometimes certain genes we don't be eh, we won't be able to use a restriction enzyme to cleave it because we don't have the particular restriction site. Okay, uh? so let, let us look at an analyze an analysis here. So DNA is collected from the cells and we can cut it into small pieces using the restriction enzyme. And because DNA, we have two copies, right? We have two copies for a particular gene, and it depends on whether it's homozygous, heterozygous, or homozygous recessive. There are some variation between this DNA sequence that can be recognized by racial enzyme. So sometimes because of the mutation take place, the different allele, therefore you can see that they may have additional racial enzymes or removal of a particular racial site. So when you cut it, we have the different fragments, then we can separate this by using agarose gel electrophoresis. Same concept, shorter fragment move further, longer fragment tend to stay. So at the end of the process, you will get a different bending pattern. And these bending patterns will indicate or, or represent your DNA profiling or DNA fingerprinting. Okay? So now, look at this. So RLP cliff, okay? Eh, uh, site loss. In this case, you can see number one, yes. Number three, still yes. Number two, for the recessive allele, we don't have already. And you can see that this is the dark line here indicates the the zone that can be detected by DNA probes, okay? So if you look at the answer here, if you look at the answer here, okay? So now try, you guys can try uh, the answer. So this is a negative terminal, this is a positive terminal, so the migrations will be from top down. So if father is a heterozygous big A, small A, so it will have two bands, right? Mother also will have two bands. Now, so if big A, big A, if you look at the diagrams here, if a big A allele, so we have the shorter fragment, but small A allele will have longer fragments. So shorter fragment will move further. 
longer fragments will move slower and tend to stay nearer. Correct. So it means that this allele, if I want to jot it down, this allele actually belongs to a small a. This allele belongs to the dominant allele. Correct. So it means that if a person with a dominant allele, then you can see one band, homozygous dominant. Heterozygous, you will see two bands. And small a, small a allele will have one band here. Okay. So in the exam, you need to know, you need to analyze, and then you need to draw the bands. Are you clear? Okay, for RFLP. But how about this band? How about this fragment? This fragment is not that not there. This fragment actually we don't detect it because DNA probe only detect a specific sequence. So here we won't be able to detect. Okay, so just ignore it in this part. Are you clear? So now can you see that three different siblings, okay, or three different offspring here, or kids here, show you three different bending patterns. And you may see that, oh, these two are same, what? They are same. Yeah, because we only consider one. We only consider one gene. If you put in more genes, you will going to get more bending pattern, the combination. I just I say that you can have big A, big A, big B, big B. You can have one bending pattern already. If you have big A, big A, big B, small B, another bending pattern, right? Can I see that? Yeah, big A, small A, big B, big B, you get another bending pattern. So in this case, you have more than, I mean, uh, more gene involved, definitely you will going to have more unique bending pattern, which represent our DNA profiling. Okay, so what is the explanation here? So in the RFLP testing for the big A allele, total DNA from the individual tested is digested with this digestion enzyme and run in the southern blot. So the blood is hybridized with a probe specific to region two to three, so producing a band with shorter length. So this band can be visualized near to the positive terminal. Okay, can you see that? Positive terminal, big A allele. So if the small A allele is present, the probe stick to the one long fragment one to three, this band is, uh, uh, what this band, this band, sorry. So this band can be visualized near to the negative terminal. Can you see that? So near to the negative terminal for the small a allele. So homozygous big A, big A individual will only have big A alleles. So therefore, RFLP analysis show one band only correspond to the fragment two to three near to the positive terminal. But if the individual with homozygous small a, small a also will give us one band corresponding to the fragment one to three, but because they are longer, they are nearer to the negative terminal or the sample loading well. Okay, so heterozygous individual have both big A and small A allele. So therefore, the analysis will show two bands, one band nearer to the loading well, which respond to one to three, and another band were further away from the sample loading well as corresponding to the fragment two to three. That's why you get two fragments. Okay, so this is old technique. Okay, this old technique require more DNA sample. Sometimes you won't be able to do it because of the limitations in terms of our restrictions enzyme. So this enzyme may not be able to cut it out, okay, because we don't have that particular restriction site. So old technique, okay. So now the new techniques uh, developed by looking into this, what we call the variable number tandem repeats, okay. We're looking at this variable number tandem repeats or short tandem repeats. So what are the differences or what is the, the, the main difference here is, Variable number tandem repeat is a big group. So it means that any repeat in our DNA, we name them as a variable number tandem repeat or VNTR. But out of so many variable number tandem repeat or VNTR, some, they actually repeat with a, small, a, a short sequence. Let's say, for example, ATCG, 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 about a four a nucleotide repeat. So in this case, we call them, we give them a special name called short tandem repeat. Are you clear? So basically, it's something like this. You have, let's say, for example, you have AAA, AAA, TCC, AAA, AAA, TCC. So this one, you can see that, okay, longer, nine nucleotides, okay? So we call this a VNTR, okay? So it can repeat many, many times. But sometimes we may see a CGA, 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 CGA. Ah, this one short repeat, normally four. Eh? So this one we deem it as a STR, 
short tandem repeat. But all of them also belongs to VNTR. As long as they repeat, they are VNTR already. But if the shorter one, we give them a special name called STR. Okay? So what we can do in this case, this STR found at what we call the non-coding region. If you look at our DNA, only about 3% code for the polypeptide and the protein. So the remaining one, actually they keep on repeating. So this repeat, okay, this repeat is similar to the allele that can be inherited. It can be passed on from the parent to the next generation. Are you clear? So we can use this for the DNA profiling. I will show you guys later. Okay, so it means that no matter how many repeats here, no matter how many repeats here, it won't affect our phenotype because it's not code. Are you clear? They don't code for any protein. They don't give us any phenotypes. Okay, but the good thing here is they behave like the allele. It means that it can be uh, inherited by the offspring. And also, they are highly polymorphic. Highly polymorphic. What does mean highly polymorphic? means that the number of repeat in myself and you and your brother will be different. Okay? It's not that everybody will okay, have two repeats. No. It may have okay, two repeats. Some may have four repeats. Some may have 10 repeats. So if you take roughly about 16 to 20 of this VNTR loci, then again, we can generate. We can generate what we call the DNA profiling and DNA bands for us to actually go I mean, uh, analyze for the criminal, analyze for the parental testing. Are you clear? Okay. Uh, and STR, we can use STR because shorter. It's roughly about four basis repeats. Okay. Sometimes you may have three to five bases, but normally we look at this four basis repeat. For example, AACG, 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 and continue. So what we're going to do here is this STR loci are targeted with a specific, okay, sequence specific primal amplified using PCR. This is a good thing here. Why? Because even though we don't have the, uh, even though we don't have this, uh, what we call this, the region enzyme, doesn't matter, we can use a primal, bracket out that particular uh, region. When you bracket out the particular regions already, then we can separate them by using gyrophoresis, detect by using that particular DNA probe again. Then it will give us the bending pattern. So typically about 5 to 20% share the same STR allele, but if you consider one. But if you use multiple STR loci together, then you can see that it can discriminate the individual, means that nobody are going to have the same DNA profiling pattern. Okay, so let me show you guys a simple one. Okay, now let's say uh, this is uh, from the paternal father. So in the cell, we consider two SDR loci. Okay, two SDR loci. Uh. So this from the mother. Let's say we look at the chromosome one. So we have a pair of chromosome one. Okay, a pair of chromosome one. So chromosome one, let's say, chromosome one at the SDR there. Okay, so the father, let's say we check the SDR nine time repeat. Chromosome number one for another one. If we check, oh, slightly shorter, eight times repeat. Okay, then we check for chromosome two. The SDR from chromosome two. Okay, three time repeat. Oh, we check 10 times repeat. Can I see that? Are you clear? Okay, nine, eight, three, ten. So at the maternal, also check chromosome one. Okay, so in this case, you check, oh, six time repeat. Oh, five time repeat. Okay. Chromosome 2, the XTR, eh, and repeat how many times repeat? Okay, let's say in this case, uh, okay, four times repeat. Okay, seven times repeat. Okay, I make up the, 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 the number easier for us to understand. Now, 
during gametogenesis, forming the gamete, this is haploid 2N, 2N. So we need to half it, right? So instead of having two chromosome one, we're going to choose one. So in this case, you can see that you're going to create, because of the independent assortments, you're going to create four different combinations of the sperm. Okay, so what's mean this? So it may take nine repeat plus three repeat. You may have nine repeat plus 10 repeat. You may have eight repeats plus three repeats. Okay, we may have eight repeats plus 10 repeats. Can I see that in the sperm cells? Okay, let me clear it here. Try not. Okay, chromosome one, I choose one. Chromosome two, I choose one, so nine plus three. Chromosome one, I choose nine. Chromosome two, I choose 10. So, can I see that? Okay, uh, understand? Consider two only, uh, consider two. Now, how about this? In the ovum, so I can choose six plus four. Could I not? I can choose six plus seven. Again, I have combination five plus four and combination five plus seven. The five repeats and seven repeats. Okay, the first one represents the chromosome one. The second one represents the chromosome two. So if the fertilization takes place, because it's random, right? Random. So you may have this one and this one fertilized. So the children's here, the first child, let's say the first child, we're going to have chromosome one with eight repeats. Okay, chromosome one with eight repeats. Clear enough. And then uh, another one is six repeat. Okay, and then chromosome two with three repeats. And also seven repeats. So now what we're going to do here is, okay, as Slow. Uh, we're going to use a PCR to cleave out this region. Okay, using a primer, we can cut it out. Are you clear? We use a PCR, so we have three samples now. Cut it out. Okay, at this VNTR region. And subject them for the gel electrophoresis. Okay, because fragment, different fragment, different length, right? So, Okay, so this one from the father, this one from the mother, and this is the sample. For example, let's say my sample. Okay, so from father here, if I calibrate this, uh, I calibrate. So one repeat, two repeat, three repeat, four repeat, five repeat, six, seven, eight. I think until eight only, right? Ten. Oh, God, ten. Okay, eight, nine, ten repeat. So for father, how many we get? We're going to get 9, 8, 3, 10. Okay. We're going to get 9, 1 band, 8, 1 band, 3, 1 band, 10, 1 band. Clear not. The shorter the bands, I have shorter the DNA, we move further. How about for mother sites here? 6, 5, 4, 7. Right. So 6, 5, 4, 7. Are you clear? So from us, the sample here, 8, 6, 3, 7. 8, Six, three, seven. So if you check, uh, if you check like this, we always check for the kids. Kids will have the mixture, right? So you check number eight. Eight, the eight mat match with the father. So I get this VNTR from father. If I check this or STR, okay, number seven, I match with the mother. So I get this VNTR or STR from mother. And then I check this one. Can I see that? Match, match. So now I know that, oh yeah, I'm the biological sons of my father and mother. But if, okay, if, another sample, I put it in. Okay, another sample, your sibling sample. And you see something like this. Okay, the sibling sample. And you say, hey, this one, yeah, match with the mom. Turn off. This one match with the mom. A, this two. 
couldn't see that. Are you clear? Your sibling, maybe your eh, elder brother, for example. Okay? So in this case, why? So it might be adopted one. Oh, oh sorry, it's the stepbrother, your stepbrother. Can I see that? Okay. So anything if, uh, if you if you if you realize something like this, okay, always check with your mother first. Mother will know more. Okay, because in this case, you match with the mother. But if you match with your father, then you check with the father. Okay, what actually happens, right? And in this case, okay, maybe step brother. Or if you didn't match anything, didn't match anything, maybe it's a adopted one. Can I say that? So this is why I say that DNA fingerprinting. In this case, I only use two VNTR. Two VNTR, you can see that I can create three different bending pattern already. So if I include more VNTR or STR, definitely I will get a more unique bending pattern which represents each individual. So the whole world, if you have identical twins, yes, you're going to share the same bending pattern. Okay, you can share the same bending pattern. So which is actually one of the cases actually happened in China a few years ago, okay, where the identical twins, okay, having a sex with a girl and then at almost the same time, and the girl pregnant. So means that the kids, it won't be able to know who is the father because why? The identical twins, both of them, they have the same VNTR or STR bending patterns because identical twins. Are you clear? Okay, identical twins basically come from one embryo, okay, then split into two and develop into two individuals, but they are same source, same sperm, same ovum. Okay, so this is why I say that we can use the PCR technique. Why we need to use PCR technique? Because the DNA sample, okay, we need to cleave it out, right? So PCR can help with the cleave and amplify the DNA sample. We don't want to take the whole chunk of your, 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 your okay, uh, let's say for example, you're going to take the whole, so many cells from you. I can take a few cells from you enough already. Why? The DNA sample, we can isolate it and amplify using PCR. But amplify using PCR, not enough. Because why? We need to have gel electrophoresis to separate the fragment. So that's why through the gel electrophoresis and then using DNA probe, target a particular VNTR, STR regions, we will be able to actually create this bending pattern. And this bending pattern is very, very important, okay, to uh, give us the identity. So we can check for a suspect. Because if, let's say, suspect is uh, was in this uh, crime scene, so if I have this suspect, and then I get a, let's say, blood sample from the crime scene. And then I have the suspect sample. Then whether they match or not, they must be 100% match. Are you clear? If 100% match, okay, or high matching, in this case, then I can say that, oh, yeah, you actually appear in this crime scene. So what is your explanation, right? So this is the evidence for the crime scene or forensic investigation, okay? So let us come back to this. So again, you can see that if I use three, okay, three uh, STR regions, that can create even more bending patterns. Are you clear? Even more unique bending pattern. So in this case, except identical twins in this world, very highly unlikely eh, two individuals with the same patterns of the DNA fingerprints will be found until now. Okay? The face may be similar, but yeah, so DNA profiling will be very, very unique. Okay, so uh, if in this case, can you find out the suspect? Okay, so this is victim. Okay, on the crime scene, I mean, since you have the blood of the victim and also blood of the suspect together, for example, maybe struggling again and then gets the same. Right? So now I have three suspects here. So which one you can identify? It? Okay, so you can see that again, the blood, okay, the blood sample is a mix already. So you get the, the, the victim blood and also the suspect blood together. But through this DNA profiling, then you can see that the first one match. Can you see that? This one match with the female uh, victim. This one match with victim. So now we check for those that not match with the victim. We can see. From the first band, you can see that might be suspect one or suspect two. Right. And then you look at this one, it match with the suspect two only. And this one match with suspect one and suspect two, but because of these bands, I can very sure that say that suspect two is the one that in the crime scene might not kill. I don't say 100% kill, but this person 
confirm 100% appeal in the crime scene. Okay, so answer suspect number two, eh, most likely. Okay, yeah. Then the fingerprints in the paternity, right, uh, paternity uh, parental testing, you want to see who is the father. Then what you're going to do here, we always get the child. Okay, so you can see that the first one don't know, but second, I mean, uh, match with the mother. Third one match with the mother. The last one match with the mother. Okay, so don't do, oh yeah, this one no hair, so it must be no hair, but we had to check, right, whether match or not. So in this case, you can see that, yeah, it might be first band, it might be that number two or that number three, we don't know yet, then we continue to analyze. Okay, continue to analyze, then you realize that actually belongs to that number three, all matching. Can I see that? Match. Can I see that? So, biological father is that number three. This is how we analyze the result. One is from the crime scene, second one actually from the paternity testing. We want to know who is the father. Okay, so with this, I've done for... Uh, DNA fingerprinting. 